Greetings everyone, I'm Mar. Once again, this is my opinion. As you could tell from the numbering in the title, we are now on Season 3 of Everybody Loves Raymond. So we're going from the green volume to the blue volume. And as I've said a couple times already in this series, when you look at a season for this show from top to bottom, this is my absolute favorite of the season. And if you're just looking at the titles of a lot of these episodes, you can see why. I mean, this is the season that contained Driving Frank, Halloween Candy, Getting Even, Moving Out, The Lone Roan, The Article, which I didn't find out until years later after I got the set when I was doing a rewatch. I'm like, oh, it's this episode. Another one of the first episodes I saw. No Fat. Ping Pong. Another one of the first ones I saw. Just a lot of great ones in there. If I remember right, Ping Pong was even in my top ten episodes list. Definitely has one of the best little Frank moments. But we'll get to that when we get to that episode in particular. As I said at the end of the previous video, this is, for me, where the show also hits its creative stride. The first two seasons have a lot of fun episodes, and like I said a couple times, the second season has some of the first classic episodes. But this is where everything is into full gear, and it goes straight ahead for the next couple seasons. Uh, to use a musical analogy, seasons one and two would be your vocal eases to warm up your voice. This is you going out there and hitting your notes perfect. And you just keep going and going throughout your set and then you finish strong. And funny enough, this seems to be an opinion that Ray and Phil kind of share. I mean, they even mention it in the commentary for one of the episodes from Season 2. However, this is something I probably should have looked up when I was doing Season 2. They actually did get nominations prior to this. It's some awards I've never heard of before. Like, I'm just going to go from top to bottom. Uh, Madeline Sweden got nominations for a couple of young artist ones. Makes sense. I mean, minor character, but she did just have some good acting moments in there. Especially <laughs> the episode where she's acting like a spoiled brat at the beginning of season two. Uh, they got some uh, viewers for quality television award nominations early on. They got nominated in the first season, along with the second season. This season... They won for it. Actually, Doris Robert, Roberts won for season two as well. They got Television Critics Association Award nominations. And they won for this one. Ray actually won for this one, just looking at this. So that's an outstanding thing on his viewport. Beginning with this season, this is when the show would start to get nominated with the higher awards. Like starting with the Screen Actors Guild Awards. First couple years, they got nominated for Best Performance by an Ensemble. Then they started getting nominations individually. And that culminated in 03, where they won for ensemble so perfect like satellite awards they got nominations although doris did also win in 03 perfect prism award nominations and a win in 06 people choice award nomination in 05 and then they won in 06 going out on a win there and of course going all the way up let's go up to the emmys uh, this is a oh here it is primetime emmys this is the first year they got nominated for that. They got nominated for Outstanding Comedy Series, Supporting Actress for Doris Roberts. And, of course, Frank also got a nomination, which, same thing I will say, it's a crime that he did not win any of his nominations. I know Ray won at least once, just finished scanning the list, and sadly, Peter Boyle was the only one who did not win an Emmy for playing their character. I think we all know what's appropriate for this. This is for you, you stupid stinking humps. That's more the next episode, but it's still topical since it's still season three, and it is on this same disc. And now that we got that intro part out of the way, episode one of season three, The Invasion. Another apt title because the Barone house has been invaded by termites. And of course, this is also the first appearance of the Ode to Joy intro da, na, 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 where it's filmed very cinematically whereas the openings for the first two seasons were filmed just one take very sitcom-esque other than the opening that was only in two episodes which does have a, have a cinematic quality to it but it's a home movie cinematic quality this one pure c cinema but it's also drawing on the audience's familiarity with the Barone family and their dynamic from the first two seasons <laughs> And just playing Ode to Joy 
while Ray and Deborah are trying to rush to put everything in its proper place while Frank Marie and Robert are walking across the street. And I think what makes it is a close up on Marie's face at one point. And of course they get the door locked and what it happens? Ray's like, oh. Marie reaches in through the mail slot. And Ray looks at the camera and he's like, oh <laughs> and the music kicks up again. It's still good. They would use it for a couple seasons. And if I remember right, I think they replaced it with the football one. Or they might have done the Jungle Love one. I believe it was the football one. But don't quote me entirely on that. Now, with this episode, it begins following a couple scenes that did end up on the cutting room floor. Two deleted scenes. And yes, starting with this season, I am actually going to start talking about the deleted scenes. Now, with this one, they still have them at the end. But what I'm going to do is that once I'm done doing notes... I'm going to go through to the back, because they're on the final disc, look through each one, and then as we get to episodes that have deleted scenes, I'm going to include them on the notes. I wish I had done that with the first one, but there's not really much to say about that one. And I believe it's season four where they actually start putting them on the disc with the episode. If I said that about season three, I apologize. It shows it's been a while since I've actually popped a lot of these discs in. However, I could say one thing about this season for starters. This is the first time where we have the marathon option on the discs. Where at the beginning you could just play all episodes and it just cycles through instead of having to do like what I got over here just to get it over. We don't have to do that. Oh, well, the deleted scenes for this episode. The first one is Ray is holding the sawdust. He's complaining about it while Deborah is talking with the exterminators on the phone. Ray does not want to have the tent house, doesn't want to have the house checked for termites. It's like, we can't have termites, it's not sawdust. The comedic value here is that we find out that that's not sawdust. That's what comes out of the termites after they eat the sawdust. And the way Ray Romano plays this off when he realizes what it is. Cause especially since he's already done and done that. He's like, ah, termite crap. And he starts running around. And the scene ends with Deborah talking like, uh-huh. Oh, yes, he was holding it. <laughs> it's like, well, is there something bad in termite crap? <laughs> it's like, just the look at it. It's like, hmm, I didn't know that's what termite poop looked like, but... They eat wood, so I guess it would, would resemble wood still, just with all the nutrients extracted. The next deleted scene technically leads into the opening scene that we have in the episode proper. And it's Ray talking with the exterminator, asking, can't we just do traps instead of having to do this? And he tells them the traps are inhumane, even though you're about to just gas them, so you're talking about inhumane. But I guess if the critter is going to bite off its own legs to escape versus a relatively quick death with gas even though might not the comparison might not be one to one because with humans it'd be like <laughs> with insects it might be so might not be one to one so it'd probably be more relatively painless compared to <laughs> Ray of course is not like the fact he has to pay for one tending the house and two three hundred dollars for the hotel room but Needs must when the devil drives. This leads to the opening scene of the proper episode where Marie comes in and asks, what was with the uh, van in front? Which works okay. If they had actually included this little opening part in the final episode, instead of cutting it and just having it be for the live audience and, of course, the DVD, it would have been one of those moments that they would have cut in syndication. Because you don't really need it. I mean, it's funny and it's nice in the supplemental material. But just having them re-barge in and then ask about that and then Deborah say, matter of factly, we have termites. Works a little bit better as an opener. And then, of course, Marie's reaction. Oh, my God. <laughs> uh, typical Marie. Skipping to the crux of this episode, Marie tells Ray and Deborah, you guys are not going to a hotel. You're coming across the street with me. Which, considering how Ray was with the money just now, you know he's all on board. But Deborah's thinking, like, oh, God, no. But she accepts... And now we get an interesting living situation. We got all the Barones under one roof for a couple days. Ray, you know, he's making the best of it. He's home. They're living in his old room, which I believe this is the first time we get to see his old room. Deborah does tease him a little bit about it, so nice to see. We get slight position inversion in this episode. What I mean by that is that for the status quo, Marie and Frank and, to a slight extent, Robert, are the intrusive ones in Ray and Deborah's house. Here, Ray and Deborah are at their house. 
Now they were invited. But one scene, and this is where the drama part is introduced, Deborah is in the living room sitting on the couch <clears throat> with the plastic cover, reading a book. Marie comes in to do her French classes on TV and she's like, Oh, Deborah, you're in here. And she's telling her, you know, I was coming here this time to do it. And us, the audience, knowing the character, we know what she's getting at. She's not going to come out and say it because she's too polite. Even though she'll be blunt in other ways with her passive aggressiveness. And, of course, Deborah probably already knows but is tuning it out because she's in the middle of reading. But it's like, really? Someone reading there is intrusive to you, Marie? Because that's the whole thing, is Marie can't do it with her sitting in there. It's very intrusive. And she has a nerve to go get Ray to go tell Deborah to go. And rightly, Deborah calls us out once Deb once Ray tells her. He's like, so me re sitting here reading is intrusive, but her coming across the street and listening off a bunch of stuff Marie does is not intruding. It just shows a little bit of Marie's hypocrisy when it comes to what is and is not intrusive. And also that she just has a weirdness about her. It's like, it's fine for her to go across the street and do stuff, but when she invites someone into her house and they're just sitting there reading a book, not bothering anyone, it's intruding. She can't do her lessons. Who knows? Maybe Deborah would have closed the book and then started to engage a little bit with Marie. With languages, you seem to learn a little bit better if you're working with someone, or at least that's what I remember from when I took Spanish class, working with people in addition to doing the school book work. I mean, I could also remember it was nice being able to use some Spanish with my grandmother, who Spanish was her first language. And Deborah decides that, you know what, we're going to have some fun with this. She releases the kids on the family, takes Marie's lasagna out of the oven, and replaces it with corn dogs, which leads to a very fun moment where Marie glares at Robert when he comes into the room with two corn dogs. One of them was Frank's, but she doesn't know that. We do. She thinks it's just, you know, another overly sized Barone joke when he sticks them in his pockets to hide them. <laughs> And then, of course, her walking off when she really realized lasagna was taken out. This culminates with a gag at the end where Ray decides to join in with Deborah once he has a little conversation with Robert. Robert's in his bed naked, sleeping. It's the whole little other little subplot where they get into a brief argument. Both Ray and Deborah, and, of course, Ray and Robert here, which is which leads to Ray siding with him. And he sabotages the fridge. Deborah sabotages the laundry, turning... <laughs> Marie's yellow towels white. <laughs> and then as they start talking to them, Frank and Marie realize, wait a minute, you're doing this intentionally. Which, of course, they are to a point, and they're trying to argue it like, whenever we help you, we're actually helping. Maybe in a weird way you are, Marie, but you're going from friendly helping to, as I've said a couple times, just no mother-in-law territory. You're going to the point where it's like, you're well-intentioned, but don't step over the mother's toes. Do not cross boundaries. You don't just go into someone's fridge and take stuff and throw it out just because you think it's questionable. You don't go in there and redo the kids' laundry without permission. And it, I'm Just one of those things, you do not cross these boundaries, and Marie just doesn't understand that. So I'd say that some of this stuff was poetic. I mean, it is kind of mean-spirited on Ray and Deborah's part to do all this intentionally. But it's one of those ones that this type of conversation and this type of drama is a long time coming. Although it is kind of sent back to the status quo by something that Robert brings up. Like, maybe you haven't show, done enough showing them how to do things. And of course, the entire thing of this episode is never brought up again. I don't even think the whole termite thing is brought up again, but... Like I've said time and before, repeat after me, <clears throat> sitcom writing. Speaking of writing, this is another Ellen Sandler episode. One of the writers on the show that we've heard the name a couple times, and we're going to keep hearing her name even after this. One of the writers that is able to capture the dynamics between these characters and the different ways they come across to one another. And in this episode, she perfectly captures the relationships and the dynamics of these characters having to be in close quarters for a couple days like this. And the obvious uh, situation that is going to arise from all these people being this close together. Especially with little kids running around. I'll talk that it is a long time coming, coming up. And of course going back to the status quo now that those, as Ray calls them, termite bastards are gone. All in all, this is a fun season opener. 
you know, nice to see the characters again. Fun little premise. Nice way to start the season with this. Gets the season started off on the right foot. Sets the table, as it were. Kind of an apt uh, thing, considering some of the later episodes in this season. And all in all, fun. Not much else to say about it. I know I've repeated that word a couple times. Uh, would I put it as my favorite season opener? Hmm. I'll have to look, because I know once I get to the end of these reviews of Season 9, I'm probably going to do a standalone video about my favorite season openers and season enders and least favorite ones. Probably also do an episode on my least favorite episodes, but that's going to be later down the line. I might even do that as a video essay one as a sequel to my top 10 favorite episodes video. Which is getting a lot more traction, by the way. Next episode, definitely one of my favorite of the season. Which, I'm going to tell you that, like with season 2, with this season, it's going to be hard to pick a top 5 favorite episode of the season once we get there. But this next one's definitely in the running. And it involves a place I just had to go to within the last month. The good old DMV. But who's going? None other than Frank. Frank. 